Hello, my name is Anthony Rodamonte. I'm with Copy Controls. Today we're going to be talking about how to convert an EtherCAD drive to be uh, TCP IP um, compatible. So you can either talk EtherCAT or you can talk TCP IP. You cannot do both at the same time. Um, so first thing I'll need to do is load the uh, Ethernet firmware onto your drive. So I have mine under downloads firmware downloads and here we'll find BEL ENET 4.38 that's what I have loaded into this drive if you want to check your firmware version go to amplifier properties 4.38 so uh, the next thing I want to do is make sure that your drive is connected to the to uh, a network um, the same as your PC or your device that you're trying to connect with uh, so if it's your phone make sure that your phone is connected to that same network um, so only one device should be uh, connected to the drive's IP address at a time. You shouldn't be connecting to your computer and then also connecting your phone or your another computer uh, to the drive's web page. Uh, so um, the next thing you'll want to do uh, is uh, to set up the the drive uh, hardware-wise. Um, the EtherCAT in port on the drive, it's an RJ45 uh, connector. So an RJ45 cable will be connected to the in port of the EtherCAT drive. Uh, we're going to connect that to the network. So it can either be connected to a network switch or a hub, or you can use a router. I like to use a router because routers have uh, password protection. Um, and so right now we're connected to a router, um, the Copy Controls demo router. Uh, we have no internet access, but we don't need internet. We're just going to be sending TCP IP commands over Wi-Fi um, via this router. So uh, what is the next thing? We're going to set the network configuration parameter to 201 in hex. So we'll say set in RAM, RZRX 121 to 201. I'm going to do this again in flash just in case the drive is reset okay now i'm going to get the ip address in hex and so this is the ip address what we did uh, was we um, when we set uh, 121 to hex 201 it set the network configuration parameter in the drive to ask uh, the DHCP uh, server in the PC uh, to dynamically uh, assign an IP address to the drive server. So the drive has an internal server and now it has an IP address inside of it. So this is the IP address that we just got with parameter 11F. So the first thing you'll do is you'll convert each byte to decimal and you'll just reverse the uh, going from right to left. We'll see C0 is 192. A8 is 168, 01 is 1, and 03 is 3. So converting from hex to decimal each byte. Um, so if we go to 192, 168, 1, 3, forward slash underscore default, that'll take you to the Copley default landing page. If you see this page, congratulations, that means that you've properly configured your drive to be, uh, to be TCP IP uh, friendly. So um, if you have multiple drives connected, um, you'll make just make sure that all of them have um, the firmware, the ethernet firmware inside of them, and that they have that network parameter, uh, hex 121 set to uh, hex 201. Um, and so uh, I'll show in another video how to um, write a javascript code um, you know talking to all the drives on the possible network of uh, of uh, drives um, but for now uh, yeah that's what you would want to do uh, and you would only want to load a web page into one of the drives on the network because that would be the master you don't want to have multiple masters on your network sending commands um, and uh, so TCP IP is not, um, it's not a real time, um, meaning there's no uh, coordinated motion or 
um, like uh, EtherCAT. Um, so it's uh, for certain applications. So let's go ahead and uh, load a web page here. So I have the web page needs to be named web.zip, and it has to be under, I think, uh, 500 kilobytes is, is around the maximum per drive. So this is 367 kilobytes. So I'm going to load this, upload it. Might take a little bit to upload. Let's see. <coughs> Okay, the file successfully uploaded. So here we are to our, our web page now. And um, if we zoom out, we'll see here um, that we have a, a basic GUI. I'll show you how to design a GUI in another video. Um, this is uh, the motor shaft. Um, this is an odometer displaying the speed and the current. Um, and then over here we have some buttons for simple functions. So if I press one of these buttons, we'll see the motor start start turning. Let me just take it down to about 28 RPM. So here we'll see the, the motor shaft is spinning in real time. And uh, if I want to jog negative and uh, I want to stop. So uh, this is an example web page. Uh, if I want to kind of debug my code uh, in my script, I can write to a console. And uh, here, in um, I use Google Chrome because uh, Google Chrome has a nice uh, developer tools um, tab. So I can, in this developer tools, it'll uh, reference um, my JavaScript web page. So main.js is the JavaScript uh, file in the drive. So we can see here some of the values of objects. So counts per rev on X is one. I have my code that that's being printed out on the beginning. And uh, as I changed the speed here, that was changing and we could see that. So in this way, you can print out to the console to kind of debug your script and uh, you know as you're writing your application. So uh, I hope this was helpful. If uh, you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out and uh, um, stay safe. And uh, uh, thank you very much.